Welcome to the Performance Enhancing Podcast. It's like steroids for your brain. A podcast for people looking to live life at their peak potential. Chock full of real world tools and knowledge that you can apply in your life today. By providing you with a lens into the lives, beliefs, practices, and actions of those who are already living extraordinary lives, the Performance Enhancing Podcast will help you shift your mindset or create that change in your daily rituals and habits so you can explode with success in the areas of life that are most important to you. So get ready for another dose of Performance Enhancing Podcast with Satori Prime. Here's your host, Elon Ferdman. Hello there, welcome back. Today we're gonna to look at Facebook Roundtable Part Two, and this is actually part two of part two. <laughs> anyway, in part one, what you missed is an unbelievable story of how Kurt actually ends up at Facebook headquarters and has a conversation with a girl there about everything that we've been struggling with around Facebook, sharing with her how they don't communicate and how we're not getting answers or we're getting mixed responses or ads are getting shut down even though they're okay, etc. So if you missed part one, definitely go back. In this part, we're going to switch the script a little bit and look at a few things. One, the only ad that all four of us have used that has never gotten accounts shut down, how you, where you take people to in order to do that. Uh, we look at our landing pages dead and we look at some strategies that are working and some that are not working so much today talked about setting the expectations on the landing page when you use them. Then we discuss Facebook Go, that program that we discussed in uh, part one of the series. But this time, Jason's actually gone through it with them. So we get some personal experience in there. And then we close out with what we're all doing in the next six months, given the changes that we've seen and how we want to continue working with Facebook. What are the things that we're doing to make sure that we're above board and our clients are getting fantastic results. So you'll want to stick around towards the end. And if you haven't heard already, we are now offering a 10 day challenge, not technical, more mindset type stuff around how to achieve any result in your life or have a massive breakthrough in an area of life that's important to you in just 10 days. You can check that out by simply going to satoriprime.com backslash 10, the number 10 hyphen day hyphen challenge. So again, 10, the number hyphen day, hyphen challenge. All right. Hope you enjoy this part two and we'll see you on the next performance enhancing podcast. Kurt, are you, uh, I, I know, I know from Jason, Jason, you're, you're still using landing pages, right? Mm -hmm. Straight up landing pages, simple yeah. pages, very simple stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, did you talk to them anything about landing pages? Like why they're hating on them so much? No, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, you got 45 minutes. You know, you want to appeal to a person and not throw up all over them with all this data and stuff that you got, right? You got the eye rolls. Honestly, I was just trying to depress small business owner that's like, oh my God, you're amazing. If I can just get the next answer. Like I was just trying to draw it out of her. So she tells me like a lot of the Facebook branding stuff. She goes, just do that on your, just do that on your landing page. So just do that on your landing page. She really directed stuff over to the landing page. So hmm. I was more interested in what was wrong with my video because she said I had three strikes and were all these different things inside of the video. Like that was what she, she really wanted to say, read the terms of use. Let's look inside your video. And I'm like, yeah, but tell me about, it was really that your landing was page was congruent. There wasn't any um, uh, false representations. Um, I've seen some stuff fly around recently about continuity. She brought out continuity. If you sell continuity straight up. I think we already talked about this. It is really just sending people straight into the funnel. And then you figure everything out on the back funnel. Yeah. Facebook doesn't really need to know what the subscription is, any of that other stuff until they opt it in, go through your sales process. She mainly just said, make sure the landing page is congruent. Whatever you're going to say, don't say it in your ad, say it over on your landing page. It can't confuse the user. Um, it can't fool the user, obviously. No pop-ups whatsoever. Her big thing was terms of use over and over and over and mm -hmm. claims. I told her I, we had a real estate account shut down recently. And she goes, oh, that's probably because, and I don't understand this language. Maybe you guys will get this. She goes, maybe that's because they said you can make five to 10,000 doing this. You can say you can make up to this, have the ability to make up to this. Wow. And I mean, we don't even say that. We say, how would, you not, how would you like to not manage tenants and toilets and manage all of your real estate from a kiosk? 
She goes, that's brilliant. That's exactly what we want. And I go, that account got shut down. <laughs> she goes, oh, well, I have to look around it. So I do know I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not advising any clients to run stuff to a VSL. We have some clients that will come in, we'll run it to a landing page, and they're like, listen, I'm not doing a very good follow-up. Let's run it straight to a VSL. Give me about two weeks and that stuff's shut. There's a couple of clients that I have that we can run continuously to a VSL. Uh, most of it's, uh, and I'd love to hear from you guys too, most of it's webinar registration or um, I don't want to say a complicated opt-in, but it is not get 10,000 leads. Here's your email address. It is, you know, disclaimer, article, opt-in. What about you guys? Where do you guys send? Where are you yeah, send? I mean, it's interesting. We, we've been working with a couple of big clients also who basically told us like their, what they're working on. And this kind of came from the rep, like these guys that, that worked with the rep a little while back. They had told them that the landing pages they want have everything on it. So like scrollable tabs. So it's more like built like a website where you take them and it has like everything there. So uh, like the about, uh, you know, like all these links to about us, FAQs, uh, privacy. It's like everything is super, super accessible. And they've been building these like super elaborate landing pages to try to get approved. And I'm like, I don't know if that's really the answer. I mean, they're getting them approved and they're working. Conversions are obviously down. I mean, you're giving them a lot more information. That's kind of expected. Um, but then Jason, on the other hand, is running like same old, like super, super simple landing pages. But I think, Jason, you could probably speak to this. Like your biggest shift has been to somehow continue the conversation and educate, right? Uh, we've got a few different strategies that we use depending on the market. Um, so we're running straight to like really super simple squeeze page designs where it's pretty much just a headline and a button. Um, when I'm doing that, what I'm doing is, is we start a conversation in the ad and the, the landing page continues the conversation. So it's not like we have the exact same headline on the ad as on the landing page. It's like we introduce a thought and then we continue that thought with a call to action for them to, to opt in on those, on those super simple pages. Um, then, you know, we've got pages where it's a more elaborate opt in page where maybe there's uh, an article around it or, you know, there's just more content along with the opt in. Um, we're also going straight to, to webinar, like Kurt, webinar registration, like Kurt had said. Um, and then we've got, you know, stuff where we're going to, um, like a hybrid type page where it's got a VSL at the top and some, you know, sales copy below it. Um, all of those are working. Uh, webinar registration, I think is the only one that I've ever heard that they don't really shut down for consistently. No, let's give claims. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty much like, Hey, you'll get the information on here. Give us your, uh, you know, information and you'll, you'll be reminded, uh, that's the the only one that I know has like been pretty much bulletproof, right, Jay? Yeah, uh, the, we haven't seen any issues with that, unless, like Kurt said, there are claims because you know some people are talking about how to you know make an extra five thousand yeah. dollars a month and stuff like that. That will get shut down. But you know, the from what I understand, um, now that I'm starting to get into some conversations with people in Facebook, um, they, they're they're really looking for a clear business objective on that page. And so with the webinar registration, you're making it really clear, yeah. like they're, they're yeah. registering for an actual event where, you know, like a, if you think about a simple squeeze page, oftentimes it's not clear on there what, what exactly they're, they're getting. So that, I think the reason why our squeeze pages are working really well is we always use uh, language in the pre-headline or in the headline that tells them exactly what they're going to get when they opt in. And then we're also using that type of language. I call it setting the expectation in the ad. So, you know, we'll, when we do our call to actions, we'll say, click here and register to get this cheat sheet, for example, or click here and, and, and enter your email to get this free cheat sheet. So that way we're making it a clear business objective throughout the whole process so they know what we're trying to accomplish. Did you ever end up connecting with the rep? Uh, I am in this program that's called Facebook Go. Are you yeah. guys familiar yeah. with that? talked about it last time. So, yeah. so I'm yeah. really curious. Uh, like I said, I just, did, I just did a little video on this and I have my own opinion. So I'd love to hear, is this your first experience with a Facebook Go rep or is this a second or third time around? 
Uh, this is my first experience. Um, and I'm at the stage where I haven't got to an account manager yet. So I'm still in talks with kind of like a middle guy right now. And the first 30 days. Yep. Yep. And so what we're doing is we're just getting some of the things in the account aligned with the way that they want to have it before they pass you off to an, a, what they call an account manager, which is basically the rep and they'll, they'll help you strategize and, and give you some insights on, you know, what they see being successful in, in certain markets and stuff like that. And then it, they work with you for like 30 days under that. And then after that, you can, you can basically, you'll get their contact information and you can, you know, have them help you with, with stuff. So let me, let me, let me throw this out there as devil's advocate because we got, it was what, like six, nine months ago that we were going to go through this. We got contacted to go through this Facebook go program when they just launched it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it was, it was like not even a year. Uh, and I remember we started talking to this person and they were like, we're going to need all of this, like, like every account you've ever owned, every email address you ever use, every credit. And we were just like, whoa, Nelly, do we yeah. really want to go down that rabbit hole and then be like, well, this was tied to this. And because this was shut down, you're fucked in this account. And we were like, well, we're running, you know, traffic right now. Do we really want to get us with it? Are? So yeah. I'm curious, Jay, it's like, do you feel they didn't ask me for any of that stuff? Okay, so maybe it's changed now. Well, it might have been the positioning that I was using because I came to them saying, "Look, I'm an agency, okay, and I've got a bunch of clients that I want to want to help with," and and so you know, they all they asked for was information on the client accounts. They didn't ask for any of my own stuff. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. See, see, for us, uh, we've done this. So we've done it three, four times now. The very first time. Was about very first time, yeah. Very first time was about a year ago. We got a rep. We're like leprechaun. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay, okay, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They're like, we're like, we're the agency, and they go, what? Well, you said we need to spend fifteen hundred dollars. We easily do that. Oh, I, I, I need to call you back. Well, that went first. That went rep number one. Um, rep number two comes around, and we're like, okay, okay, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We did this with an employee, so separate account. And they're like, yeah, we're a small business. And then I think they screwed up and said that, hey, we're an agency. I have a question real quick on a client's account. Yeah, we'll return your phone call. Uh, the third time we had one of our employees actually go through the 30-day program um, saying that we were a small business. And then when it came time for the handoff, the day, like the day before she was supposed to meet with us the last time, she got transferred. So that went to no rep. Oh. And then this fourth time... Um, yeah, said agency again, and they just kind of disappeared. So that's what I that was actually one of the questions I was going to ask. I was going to ask Jason as well, too, is we went through the approach of, hey, you have to be a small business because anytime we said agency, they freaked out. But you're saying the Go program for you, you said agency and they're helping you with all of your clients or just a select few or? Uh, we, we started with just two and they're going to open it up to anybody that, that I want to have the help with. Wow. And Jay, how long ago did you start? Working with them? Uh, it was it was in December when yeah. I applied for it. Yeah. And Kerb, when was the last time you did it? When I first approached him, he totally freaked me out. He wanted account IDs from previous accounts. He wanted to know what kind of ads we were running and to show him examples. I mean, it was like I basically felt like the NSA was like building a case against me, not like he was trying to help me. So, you know, when they kind of time talked to him, like, oh yeah, sorry, buddy. I'm like, something came up and the business gotta go. He emailed me one more time. I just didn't respond, and that's kind of where it ended. Because I've already been in a situation enough times on Facebook to know when it's working, just fucking leave it alone. Because if you start tinkering and like something happens, it's just a pain in the ass. I mean, our account, I don't know how much money we've run through it. I would guess like personally close to somewhere between 750000 and a million dollars. I really don't want to fuck with that account, you know? I've yeah. had it for like two and a half years. So I don't need anybody snooping around being like, oh, by the way, we missed this one. Fuck you. Yeah. You know, that's not what I want. So mm -hmm. that's just kind of where it ended. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick break here and let you know about our 10 day challenge. All you have to do is head over to satoriprime.com backslash 10 day, the number 10 day. And in it, we give you a 10 part video series that is absolutely changing lives and it's completely free. It's a mindset shift in what is possible for you in your life right now. So I just want to read to you what someone has just written me and they said, what did the 10 day challenge create for me? In summary, a plan of action. 
A man with a goal and a plan is unstoppable. Your 10 day challenge allowed me to take all that confusion and fear of my situation and see it was a period of transition. I have a plan. I've taken action and I'm implementing. Success is just over the horizon. And that could be the case for you. So head over to satoriprime.com backslash 10 day, the number 10 day, and grab your 10 free videos today and create a plan of success for you. Now back to the episode. Jed, you Kurt, want to say something? Kurt, what department did you uh, try to go through to get that? Do you, is is it Facebook Go? It was one of those things where they reached out and they said, hey, we'd like to help. And then we said agency and they go, this is honestly really just set up for um, small businesses, people who are just starting out. So yeah. then that was when our next guy was like, hey, we're just starting out. And then kind of hopped along a little bit um yeah well, I, I i think it's the department then because i i got a i got a special number <laughs> uh through somebody you probably know i'm not gonna say anything about it on here but um i can i can share it with you uh if you call this number it'll make a huge difference it's a different okay. number. yeah because I, I know that you can go in back of regular support and request go from there i have not requested go in the last 60 days yeah that. this this is a phone number that when you call it, somebody will actually pick it up. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's like it straight to a live person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, love, I have another, I, I have another little wrinkle. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that was, it. I was just saying, I'd love to know my options. So yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I have another little wrinkle that happened and Elon, I didn't even tell you this. Um, two weeks ago, I started getting a prompt on top of my thing. Uh, Facebook would approve us for a credit line. And up, oh, up, I've up seen to $150,000 credit line. Yep. Yep. I've, I've seen that. Line. Damn, son. Uh, <laughs> now, again, I'm so concerned about talking to a rep because I don't want them going through my history and shutting down an account. I would almost rather just have the account be under the radar than be above water on anything with them. Because every time I've heard anybody talk to them, all I hear is their accounts are getting shut down. It's like the more you're on the radar, the more they're looking into your shit the less likely you're to have an account that runs for a long time. We've had this account for two and a half years, untouched, running stuff that a lot of people can't run. Yeah. Uh, but it would be awesome to have a credit line. <laughs> like, I, I, actually, I just recorded a video of going through the support area and which buttons to click and how you click on disapproved ads to go the wrong way. Uh, but I remember that from a couple of other people who applied for the line of credit or they saw the line of credit come up um, or they wanted to go to 30 day invoicing. And I love this saying, and I always say this over and over when I start to make a decision, especially with Facebook is, uh, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. So I'm like, well, because I know a guy who sent over eight clients, Hey, let's do the 30 day invoicing. That's what my clients want. And they're like, Oh really? You want to come to the IRS for an audit to see if maybe we can hang out a little bit. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> and they wiped out everything. And they're like, wow. oh, your business. And he's like, Dills, I just wanted to do the right thing. Like, I, I'm just going to do exactly what you said. I'm just going to do what I'm doing right now. I just want a little help. I don't want anything else. I'll pay my bill on a daily basis. I don't care. Yeah. I just I don't want to be shut down. I feel, yeah. I feel like everything they do is to bait you into giving them more information so that they can find what you're doing wrong. Um, and it's honestly, it's not worth it. Like I would rather keep spending our own money than going down that road with them. And that's, it's a huge concern. Well, so... I have a quick question. Um, I have to be off in about in about seven minutes. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' kind of thoughts on 2015. I can tell you what I'm working on in 2015 to overcome sure. this. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts of 2015. Sure. sure. Um, go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we're of the mindset, and we shared this, I think, uh, on the previous call, which like, I love what, I think it was Justin was saying that's like, what is the user, is this enhancing the user experience or not? And so our whole thing is like, how are we building stuff that enhances user experience? And this is kind of the way I envision it. People go onto Facebook because they're bored at work. They want to see what their friends are up to. They want to see pictures of their kids or grandkids or other whatever. Like no one goes onto Facebook and is like, today, I want to find how to start a new business. Or today, I want this amazing hair cream that's going to make my hair grow. Like no one does that. Yep. What they do is they like scroll around and if something piques their interest, right, you start a conversation and then now you're taking them down a rabbit hole. So my whole thing is like, if I know who my audience is in whatever niche it is, how can I serve that audience? And by serve that audience, I mean, give them content that they actually want, right? So like one of the things that we're about to launch, we're in the final process of putting together is 
our back end to this, and I'll start there, is a high end entrepreneurial community, kind of like a a community that you can come in and build a business online, right? And the packages are really expensive. I mean, it goes up to thirty thousand dollars. But on the front end, you can't really say that. You can't be like, hey, join this amazing community and learn. Like, it just w- doesn't work. So we said, I read this amazing book uh, by Robert Greene. It's called Mastery. And so what we're doing is, this is the first book we're going to launch. We're basically creating like a free book giveaway funnel, but not with our own book. You know, a lot of people like create their own DVDs or books or whatever. Jason's actually had success with that. We're like going to give like, we're going to ship it straight from Amazon to you. That's it. And the idea is I get the right mindset person, right? Because I know that those are the type of people. So they're getting great value. Then I can start continuing that conversation because if someone has raised their hand and said, hey, I want this type of education, then guess what? I know I can have a different conversation with you. So that's the kind of stuff that we're going to start building, which I don't know how Facebook could ever come to us against that stuff. It's like, I'm being straight up. I'm giving people amazing value. I'm like, there's nothing that they can say or do. And that's really where we're going for in 2015. And just before I let someone else speak, I want to just share one other highlight that I read. And probably you guys saw this article too. Um, that Facebook has released that they've been like looking at the trillion of data points about what people share, what people like, what you post about questions, whatever. Yep. What they want to do, and I don't know how soon this is going to come out, but what they want to do is basically allow the marketers to do kind of more like uh, search type advertising. So if someone's going to say like, hey, to your friends, like, hey, who's got a good recommendation for restaurants in San Francisco? Yep. And you're a marketer for a restaurant in San Francisco. It's like, that's exactly who you'll be able to target. Very similar to what Google's doing. Yep. If that happens, um, I mean, all of us will be having field days. <laughs> so I mean they kind of have that now inside a graph search but it's just not fu- it's not refined yet like exactly. it's Exactly. Well, kind of sort of but it's not it's not usable to the point where yeah. you can be like, well, I can go to some client who owns a pizza shop in San Francisco and say, "Hey, I'm going to get you a ton of business." Um it's just not there. So that's really what we're focusing on. We're trying to our goal in 2015 is to get away from landing pages to kind of use more of the content conversation retargeting and and do it that way then hit them on the front end with it yeah i mean i'll just say you know for for me because i do a lot more of the marketing stuff it's it's definitely becoming much more of a content and branding play for me uh right now especially with like boosted posts i actually get a ton of traffic from uh, a lot of shares on our content and i would almost rather see the value three four five six months out just by consistently putting together good content and just having people get to know us and then naturally buying the content through the website than just start slamming all over the head but i i kind of want to play in both worlds and that's where my frustration comes in i love the branding stuff i love the long-term relationship building but at the same time it's like if i'm putting money out i gotta i gotta see a return also yeah. otherwise i can't keep putting money out yeah. Uh, so I'm like, we're treading lightly in those worlds. We've been very fortunate from, from what I know. And for the most part, I hope this doesn't put us on some fucking radar somewhere. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, really <laughs> like we're on enough radars with Facebook as it is for, yep. all, for all stuff that we've done. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, and, and I like that. It makes me feel good. I don't want to do the undermined marketing. I don't want to make false claims. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I run, I just want people to know you got to fucking work. <laughs> that's pretty much what I need you to know. Yeah. Like the, this works if you work, right? Jay? Yeah. I mean, my, my whole thing is just trying to figure out how to make direct response compliant on Facebook. Like, cause I, I mean, you can go the native route. I, I've tried that. I have a hard time making that convert at the numbers, especially my clients are looking for. Right. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's just continuing to try to get on the inside and, and have somebody that can give me some freaking clarity to how to make direct response work compliantly on Facebook. Jay, we're going to send you in naked next time to FB. <laughs> Maybe get some other I, I have been working on my body. <laughs> It's uh, for my body. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go. I'll go here real quick. So I got to run here in just a minute. Yeah. Which I appreciate everybody's time. And like I said, I'll share the video that I had talked about and a link to all of our other stuff. Um, so a couple of things is I really agree with all you guys. I mean, the one thing is is like I'm, I agree with over on Jason's side. It's 
actually, I agree with all you guys on. I get clients that come over and they want to make an ROI in 30 to 60 days, which is cool. But on the other side, just repeat you. They don't treat it like a fucking business. And they're like, well, wait a minute. I split. I had a client the other day. They're like, Kurt, I've spent $4,000 with you. I split tested three landing pages. I am sick and tired of making landing pages. And I go, dude, I can put in a thousand dollars, make fifteen hundred with my offer, like, and we just scale whatever. He goes, that's nice. And I go, yeah. And it took me ninety days, and I tested thirty different pages, like, and we said this before. McDonald's restaurant, you know, five hundred grand in, hundred thousand dollar net worth. You spend in a year, you break even, four months or three months at Hamburger University. Like, I don't know wherever people ever thought of, oh, the interwebs means instant money, right? Yeah. So the branding play, I completely agree with you guys with. Jason, completely agree with you as well, too, where clients want a fast ROI. So here's really what I've been looking into and really thinking of, which is, okay, I want to do the direct response and I want to build the relationship as well. So what I'm just doing now with clients is saying, okay, here's what we're going to do is we'll set you up with the whole funnel. We really talk, uh, talk about uh, funnel targeting, and I'll be talking a lot more about this over the next couple of months. But we set up a ton of retargeting pixels in each part of the funnel. So that is that would be with Twitter, that would be with AdRoll, that would be with uh, that would be with um, Perfect Audience. We do with uh, Google Display as well, which obviously kind of overlaps. Now they all kind of overlap each other just a little bit. But here's the thing, which I think is absolutely amazing to round out about. It is a lot of people they all copy each other, right? It's like oh they got a nice car over there. Oh crap! If I just had leather seats, then I just yeah. so for instance, Twitter's coming out with similar audiences. Google is doing the exact same thing as well. Perfect audience, you're able to upload your email list. And if you have all those retargeting pixels put in, if Facebook gets shut down, retar these retargeting platforms like SiteScout can still display on the Facebook network whether you have an ad account or not. Exactly. So what I want to do is I want to set people up with a bunch. It really kind of goes back to the old days of doing a bunch of SEO stuff for people and saying, hey, it's cool. If one gets shut down, that's cool because I got these other retargeting options and I have this other cold traffic coming in. But I'll tell you this, and, and I may mention this in the last call, you know, spending $25 on Twitter and then having a rep proactively call us, spending $300 on Google and Google calling us, uh, spending $300 on LinkedIn, spending uh, $150 on AdRoll. And I'm thinking, I had no idea how bad my current girlfriend Facebook is, how much all these other people want to talk to me and work with me. So I'm just, let's get everything set up, treat it like a damn business. Let's run it for the long term. But if something gets shut off, we're just going to focus into cold market and retargeting yep. and with the marketing play because I require the direct response and 30-day turn stuff. Yep. I think the future is in retargeting as well. I think we've, we all do that. It's just a matter of how to get people onto those lists. Um, yep. I think next time we should definitely talk about, uh, with retargeting specifically, like the sequencing, like sequenced ads, how that, that's been kind of the, the way of the... I'm actually recording that this week and next week. I just did a webinar on it last week with Todd Brown. Yeah, I think that that's kind of like going to be the next step. So, I agree. Um, all right, boys. All right, dude. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Awesome share today. Thank you. Awesome Thank Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. All right, bye. So, there you go. That's a wrap. Uh, lots to think about there, right? Landing pages, what are you going to do with them? How are you going to alter ones that you have? How are you going to make yourself future-proof for what Facebook's doing going down the road? And three, really, what is the thing that you're going to outline in the future? In the next one, like we said, we're going to talk about retargeting and specifically sequencing your retargeting ads to actually take people through a process very much like you would in an email but you can actually do it now with retargeting ads. So again, you know, just stop and think, what is it that you're trying to accomplish with your marketing? And is it something that has a long-term sustainable model for keeping you on Facebook or getting you shut down? Okay, I hope this has been helpful for everyone. Let me know. You can email me directly at elon at satoriprime.com or you can just leave a comment below the YouTube video itself. And again, make sure to check out our 10-day challenge, which has just been released. You can check that out at satoriprime.com, 10, the number 10, hyphen day, hyphen challenge. Free, incredible information for you to completely have massive breakthroughs in your life today. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll talk real soon. Thank you for joining us on this week's Performance Enhancing Podcast. We've taken this pep talk and created a custom action guide so you know exactly what action steps to take now to grow your business. 
just head over to satoriprime.com slash podcast and download it for free. Also, please leave a comment and rate this podcast on iTunes. It'll help us get the word out. Thanks for listening. Now, go and implement. We'll see you next time. Did you run through dust till you hit the floor?